Rub up your engines! People always asking me, Scotty, somebody's trying to tell me I need to flush my automatic transmission, have it all flushed out, and new fluid put in. Is that a good idea? No, it's not a good idea. Now, the reasoning behind flushing isn't a bad idea. Realize most automatic transmissions, when you drain the pan, take it off, empty it out, maybe three, four quarts of fluid comes out, and some of these systems hold like 14, 15 quarts. So a bunch of the old fluid remains inside, especially inside the torque converter. Because it's not like flushing your radiator system out, which is much simpler. Now, radiators have tiny holes that the coolant has to go through. You want to keep it clean so that all those passageways don't get clogged up. And a cooling system is very simple. You got a radiator that flows through, you have a water pump that pumps it through the system, goes through the jackets of the engine inside to take the heat from the engine, and then pump and dissipate it through the radiator. Simple system, you don't want it clogged up. A mechanical, or in some cases the new ones are electric pumps, but they still just pump the fluid. So, you flush it out, you get all the crud out, you're not going to have any problems. But automatic transmissions? Completely different animal here. Automatic transmissions are very complex inside. They have electric solenoids. They have tiny little passageways that go by pressure differential. You have dirt in your automatic transmission and you run a power flush that's power pushing the fluid through the system. Those tiny little holes, some of the crud could be pushed into the little holes, jamming them up. I have seen hundreds of people have the transmission flush somewhere else. They bring it to me and say, Scotty, my transmission is slipping now, or it won't go into gear, or it's shifting rough, and it wasn't doing it before I had the transmission flushed. And it's true, that can easily happen. The best thing to do is to drop the transmission pan, clean it all out, and change the filter. The filter is there to catch most of the crud. So you drop the pan, clean the dirt out in the bottom, put a new filter in, then the system is good to go if you do it regularly. Now when I was a young mechanic in the 1960s, we would change the transmission fluid and filter every 30,000 miles. The fluid wasn't as good. The transmissions weren't as good. It had to be done more often. Now today, the transmissions are better. The fluid is better. I would still change it every 60,000 miles or so in any vehicle. And for heaven's sake, don't listen to those people that say, ah, the transmission fluid in a modern car, it's lifetime fluid. You never need to change it. Then you ask an engineer, what does lifetime fluid mean? And an honest one will respond, well, it means that the fluid is good for the lifetime of the transmission. Well, ask them what the warranty is. Usually it's 60,000 miles or something. Hey, I don't want a transmission that after 60,000 or 80,000 miles goes out. Maybe the fluid's still good, theoretically, but if the transmission isn't shifting and you gotta spend four or five grand for a new one or have it rebuilt, not a good idea. My old Celica, it's got 230,000 miles and the transmission still shifts like a dream. Mind you, I change the fluid every 30,000 miles. Not that big of a deal. I don't even worry about the filter in this because these Toyota designs, a lot of them, don't have an actual filter. They got a little screen, just like a mosquito screen on the windows of your house. You just clean them. You don't have to replace them because there's not that much in them. Because realize, transmission fluid is cheap. Transmission rebuilds and new transmissions are very expensive. You don't want it to go this far. You don't want a transmission that revs way too high before it starts shifting gears. That's a no-no. You don't want a transmission that perky jerkies when it's taken off or slips when you're trying to take off. And you don't want a transmission that you put it in reverse and you step on a gas and it won't move anywhere. These are all signs that you have a transmission problem. You want to avoid this at all costs. Let's say you let it get really dirty, never changed it at all. Then, if you try to flush it, all that crud is thrown through the system. As I said, theoretically, it sounds like a good idea. You'll flush all the crud out of the system and have brand new fluid in. But it often doesn't work that way. Not only because stuff can get clogged up, but an old transmission that's worn, they all run by friction. The fluid has friction in it, and the fluid friction helps the dynamics of making the car move down the road. Well, guess what? Really dirty fluid actually has more friction in it. So if you change 
your transmission fluid by flushing it and you get all the dirty friction fluid out and put in new slippery shiny brand new fluid guess what a lot of times the transmissions will start to slip now to counteract that on a really old transmission let's say the transmission needed a shift so I had to drop the pan real pro mechanics like myself they will save the old fluid and put it back in so it won't have that problem. Now that might sound like a stupid idea. Take out the old fluid, replace broken parts, then put that old fluid back in. You got a car that's got 150, 200,000 miles. A lot of times that is the smarter way to go. With that kind of mileage, you're often living on borrowed time and your borrowed time goes way down to nothing if you put in fresh fluid from really old dirty fluid. So why do some mechanics and shops tell you, oh, we're gonna flush your transmission fluid? Well, there's two main reasons for that. And numero uno is, it's a profit making thing. It's like guys that say, oh, we have to power flush your injection system. If your car's running perfectly fine, you got no problems, a lot of times that's just overselling something to people. And flushing the transmission fluid, that's an often oversold item. And number two, it's very easy for a shop to do it that has the equipment. If you're gonna change the filter and fluid, you gotta drop the pan. A lot of the modern transmission pans don't even have gaskets. They're glued on, and let me tell you, it is a job getting that old glue off without breaking anything. You gotta hit and pry and pull. It's messy. You gotta buy a filter. Then you gotta fill it all back up. But with the pressure machine, automatic transmissions have cooler lines on them that go to the radiator or to a special cooler. All they gotta do is take those two lines off, hook it to their machine and flush it through. It's a very easy thing for them to do with the equipment. And as most guys charge more money to flush a transmission than to just drop the pan and change it, they're making more money. Not a good idea to have an automatic transmission flushed. Now, yes, you wanna have clean fluid, but if you change it often, that's good enough. Yeah, you're not changing it at all, you're changing some of it, but you're changing enough that if you keep doing it, and if it has a filter and you change that filter, it's gonna get rid of any problems that you're gonna have in the first place. And that's especially true in modern cars because the new cars, most of them use a full synthetic fluid. That fluid lasts longer. If you're just changing a bit at a time, maybe a third of what's in it when you just change the filter and fluid, the old fluid mixed with the new fluid, it doesn't have the degradation that the fluids did when I was a young mechanic in the 60s and they just flat wore out. Plus the transmissions are so much better made than they used to be. Back in the day, almost all the American automatic transmissions, they had automatic clutches inside, that's what they called them automatic transmissions, and they would shed a lot of clutch material, and that clutch material made of asbestos, of course it's gonna clog stuff up. Well, they don't make them like that anymore. So you don't have to worry about the gross contamination that the older ones would get. If you didn't change them a lot, you're gonna have serious problems. But today, no. The designs are better, the fluids are better, so you should stay away from flushing them. Now, as far as I'm concerned, there's only one exception to this rule of not flushing. Let's say you got a vehicle and it won't even go down the road, or it slips so bad that it's almost undrivable. What the heck? If you want to take a gamble, somebody hooking up a machine and getting all the crud out of the system, especially in American automatic transmission, you might give it a try. If you say that, hey, it's gonna cost you three, four grand to have a rebuilt transmission put in, and it's an old car that's all worn out, and it's slipping like mad or doesn't even move, what the heck? You might give it a wang just to see if it'll work. And sometimes it will work. I'll say, 25, 30% of the times that I've seen it happen like that, they went back to at least drivability. They could go down the road okay, maybe they still slipped a little, or they clunk a little, but you could actually drive it when before the flush you couldn't. But that's in an extreme case of an extreme junker worn out vehicle. Don't think that if you got a modern vehicle that's got 60, 70,000 miles in support design and the transmission is slipping or shifting weird, that flushing is gonna help that at all. Because realize that automatic transmissions are very complicated and very sensitive to fluids, differential pressure, to the friction that's inside them. It's not like engine oil. Okay, you're driving a car, your engine's firing gasoline explosions. There's all kinds of after effects of the burning and water vapor that get into the oil and contaminate it. So that stuff's gotta be changed at least once a year or every five, 6,000 miles in most cases. And yes, modern automatic transmissions, they're sealed units. They don't have explosions and water and stuff going inside them. They are sealed as long as you don't go under 
underwater and air from the transmission bubbles out water takes its place when it's underwater because there isn't the buildup like there is in an engine but over time you do get some buildup just from friction things wearing pieces coming off inside so you do want to change the fluid so maybe every 60,000 miles or something in a modern car but please listen to Scotty don't get suckered into being sold a transmission flush job because then you may need a transmission overhaul job shortly after that you just weren't prepared for especially if you had a transmission that shifted perfectly fine in the first place and then it's starting to act up after the flush you got a transmission problem with this kia check engine lights coming on oh, well i got my scan tool in the dash it says p0741 torque converter clutch problem slip in or off so that's actually a very common problem with these kias as they age on a scan tool I looked at the recorded data for the trouble code and it showed that it happened at about 56 miles an hour. And what's happening is the torque converter is either slipping or the lockup is not working right at higher speeds. Modern vehicles have automatic transmissions that get about the same gas mileage as the standard. All automatic transmissions have a little slippage in them so when you come to a stop and you step on the brakes, the engine doesn't stall. In a standard transmission, if you did it, the engine would stall. You have to push down the clutch, put it in neutral. Automatic transmissions don't work that way. They have some slippage but decades ago they started putting these torque converter lockups in the automatic transmission so when you're on the highway speed and this one was 56 miles an hour the solenoid locks it in place so there's no slippage at all so you get the same gas mileage as you would in a standard one well this system's starting to break down needless to say even in this 12 year old Kia it's all computer control there could be a ton of things wrong but often it's just the fluid I know this particular vehicle got over 100,000 miles of fluids never been changed so I'm assuming it's dirty first we're gonna check it to see if it's low we start it up with the engine in park then we check the fluid reach in here wipe it off put it back in then check the level in this case it's full of what it should be but as you can see it's also pretty dirty it's supposed to be red so we're going to take a gamble on this one, change the fluid and add some of this Lucas additive. As you can see, it says it stopped slip. I've used this stuff for years. And in older transmissions like this, I've often gotten lucky and it actually solved the problem like this that just started out. This guy's the original owner of the vehicle and it's the first time this code has ever tripped. So I'll jack it up in here and crawl under with a drain pan. Well, forget this drain pan because as you can see up here, the drain bolt right here. It's right above the frame, so it's going to splatter all over. So we need a bigger pan. Luckily, I got a big one just for that. So it can take a lot more fluid from a bigger area. Out of the way, bunk. Now, these are often hard to get to, so get a giant wrench that fits and a big hammer to hit it with. Then it whacks off. Now you take it off. Probably going to make a big mess, but that's life. Off it comes. There it goes, all over the place, just like I said. That's why you need the big pan. Brilliant design. And as you can see on the drain plug, it's magnetic. There's some little black filings on it. Not really bad, but it shows there's wear inside. Then once it's done draining, you put the drain plug back in. In it goes, and then tighten it up. Then since we already checked it with the gauge and it was full, we measure how much is in here and put the same amount right back in. As I said before, I'm gonna use the Lucas Transfix too. Instead of one of the quarts, I'm gonna put this in. Drive it and see what happens. So we'll pull out the stick, put it in the funnel, and pour in all the fluids. And of course, remember to put the transmission fluid in too. Then get rid of the funnel, put the dipstick back in, and don't forget to recycle the transmission fluid. Then let the jack down the ticket for a good half hour spin. Don't forget to close the hood. Now, only time's gonna tell if this actually fixes it, but from my experience with these Kias, since it's the first time it happened, fluid's never been changed, I'd say I have at least a 50% chance that it'll stop slipping and tripping that code. Now, if the code keeps coming back, that means it's wearing out inside mechanically and it's gonna cost a small fortune, probably more than the 12 year old vehicle is worth, but this often fixes them for quite some time. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.